I want to go back to Israel. CNN's Nick Robertson is live there. Nick, what are you learning? Well, we've just learned from the Israeli Defense Force that they have put some troops across the border into Gaza in the past 24 hours. They call it a a local um, a local. Uh, looking for the language here exactly, a local raid. And so a limited incursion, a local raid is a language they use uh, to describe the troops that they've sent across into Gaza. It's not clear how many they've sent across. It's not clear yet what their mission was. It's not clear yet if their mission was successful. It's not clear yet if they had any casualties. But this is the first time since the weekend, since this big buildup of forces, that we've heard from the IDF that they have, in fact, sent troops inside the Gaza Strip. This, they say, was over the past 24 hours. The indication seems to be uh, that this was limited, uh, and the indication seems to be um, that it is over now, that those, those troops are out, and that would perhaps be within the sort of expected operational parameters for something like this, that the uh, IDF would not announce something like this while they had forces over the border inside of Gaza itself. It really is interesting uh, that they did make this public. And you said very clearly that we don't know what the mission is right now. I mean, you would think it might be twofold. One is to try to get hostages. Another is uh, that they located some of the, uh, of the terrorists or some of the uh, higher-ranking uh, officials in Hamas they are looking for. But what does it tell you that we know this information right now? Um, there's a there's another thing to add to that mix of what it might be as well. It, it, it might be going in to recover bodies. It might be going in to recover uh, soldiers who uh, mm. who who died over the weekend and have been on the other side of the fence. Um, it could be as simple as that. Mm. Uh, but what it speaks to it, it, what it speaks to is that Israel is. M more and more on a footing where it can go into this very dangerous area for troops uh, and be ready to protect itself and carry out a mission. And it's indicative that there will be more missions like this to come. I think until we get the details of, uh, of precisely what it was, if it was more than just, let's say, a body recovery, mm -hmm. uh, then, then, then that, will, that will tell us that they're, uh, that they're really on a forward footing at the moment. Thank you so much for that, Nick. I want to bring back uh, Colonel Cedric Leighton, who uh, will hopefully continue to give us a bit, per, a bit of perspective on what Nick just reported. What are your thoughts? So, Dana, the, the key indicator here is that this was a series of small raids, and every single one of the options you talked about, uh, you know, possibly a hostage recovery mission, possibly the business about uh, going after the senior leadership of Hamas and or the recovery of the remains of uh, dead Israeli soldiers, all of those are possibilities. I am thinking it's either number one or two at this point. Uh, in essence, uh, what they're looking for is uh, would be a perfect thing for Israeli intelligence to recover its uh, lost luster uh, in the wake of uh, the debacle on the strategic uh, front if they have a good tactical intelligence success where their special operations forces come in and they actually uh, have a successful mission. Of course, we don't know yet whether or not the mission has been successful. We have no idea uh, you know, what the actual targets were, uh, but it seems as if uh, this is the kind of mission uh, where special operations forces would go in and have very final, fine I targets, finite targets that would go in and uh, they would be able to take uh, actions on them and, and uh, meet limited objectives in that way. Colonel, I'm just being told in my ear that the IDF says that they were, in fact, searching for hostages as part of this raid. We do not know if that was successful. Again, what does that tell you as a former intelligence officer? So the likelihood is very high that we might be disappointed with the outcome of the Stena because of the way in which Hamas operates. Uh, but uh, we could see, uh, hopefully, uh, some success. But I don't want to give anybody any false hope at this point in time. Uh, it's very early in, in this. Uh, the IDF, if, uh, if things are successful, uh, at some point the IDF is clearly going to announce uh, that they have 
have rescued hostages, and uh, of course that would be a big political as well as military victory uh, for the Israelis. And it would also clear the way for further incursions uh, from an operational standpoint on the military side, further incursions of a more conventional nature if they choose to do them into Gaza. Uh, so that, uh, you know, we're kind of in, in this environment now. So if this was a hostage uh, rescue mission or uh, trying to find out where the hostages are, uh, that would be a classic special operations mission, and it would be something that uh, would have a high payoff for the Israeli uh, political and military leadership. More on that breaking news into CNN. The Israeli Defense Forces say that they have carried out some raids in the Gaza Strip. They say that they are searching for hostages. I want to bring in Matthew Chance, who is across this story following the developments uh, reporting today from Tel Aviv. Uh, Matthew, what do we know? Well, I mean, look, I mean, we're all bracing, of course, uh, for the, um, oh, I'm getting it coming back in my ear here. Uh, we're all bracing for the possibility of a large scale um, Israeli invasion uh, by land I into the Gaza Strip. Uh, but of course, we have to remember uh, that complicating that military o operation um, is the fact that there are between 100 and 150 Israeli hostages that have been hidden by Hamas militants after they were seized inside Israel all across that territory. And I think what we're seeing now, according to the IDF, small limited incursions into the Gaza Strip with the express purpose of, you know, first of all, trying to neutralize terrorist locations is, is the first thing to say, but also to try and locate the whereabouts of some of those hostages. In fact, the newly appointed um, hostage affairs um, coordinator here in Israel uh, gave me a statement earlier uh, saying that they were doing everything they could on every level to try and you know search every area of ground to try and find where these people uh, are where the people are located um, and so I think this is this is a part of it but to be clear it is not we don't think uh, the beginning of the large-scale land invasion that, that everybody's braced for. But again, to reiterate, you know, when that happens, the presence of those uh, uh, captives in the Gaza Strip is something that the military planners are going to have to take into account. Already, Hamas militants mm -hmm. say that as a result of the ferocious airstrikes that have been pounding areas of the Gaza Strip for the past several days, at least 13 of the hostages they took have been killed. That's not been corroborated by the Israelis or by the United States, but it, it does underline what a precarious situation uh, that the military planners are uh, and we all are currently um, in, involved in, Becky. Yeah, and diplomatic sources had told me earlier in the week and confirmed now by the uh, Prime Minister of Qatar speaking alongside the U.S. Secretary of State today, saying that there are efforts that they are mediating between Israel and Hamas to try and effort the release of those hostages. Earlier on in the week, we were told that, that, would, that you know, the, the efforts were around an exchange of hostages, uh, women and children, Israeli women and children uh, in Gaza for um, women and youth in uh, prisons in Israel. So we know that that is ongoing. We also know that the Secretary of State, uh, uh, um, Antony Blinken, who's been in Jordan and is now in the Gulf doing the rounds, trying to ensure that there is some sort of humanitarian corridor uh, set up for, uh, and, and, and some sort of safe zones set up for these gardens. Uh, gardens. We just spoke to the Jordanian foreign minister who said, you know, that Gazans need to, to stay within the country as far as Jordan is concerned, within the enclave as far as Jordan is concerned. They don't want to see the spillage of Gazans outside of the enclave. But clearly, you know, as they are told by the IDF to move from northern Gaza, one assumes, you know, because there is this imminent assault by ground and air, forthcoming, the IDF trying to ensure that Gazans are, are evacuated out of the way. Hamas, of course, uh, telling uh, Gazans to stay in place. Uh, there is an awful lot going on. The Secretary of State not only looking at the humanitarian corridors and the hostage issue, also uh, speaking to the Israelis and the region about how to de-escalate what is going on, both you know, in the short term, in the hours to come, and trying to ensure that this conflict, what is going on here now uh, in Israel and in Gaza, does not spill outside of these borders.